Hi there, fellow rent heads. My name is Paul Allen. I'm your official blogger for CypherRent.com. Today I'm here with producer Jeffrey Seller. Very excited. Um, my first question, why return to rent now? And what's different this time around? I hate to seem facetious, but why not? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it's been th almost three years since rent closed on Broadway. And um, I think that we perceived that um, there's a place for rent in this marketplace, in this city, in this country, in this world, and that the fans keep generating anew. Um, young people who were five, seven, 12 years old when the show opened are now often in their 20s and they're interested in the show. It still seems to have something to say to young people. Its message seems to still be contemporary, even though the show is not, mm -hmm. even though it takes place in 1991. As you just brought up, Rent takes place in a very much a different New York than the one we see today. How do you bring Rent to the new generation and still make it relevant and fresh? Through the heart. Um, politicians will come and go. Cars will come and go. Um, fads in New York City will come and go. But the search for love is constant. The bohemian drive to honor thy soul, to um, um, follow my dreams without selling out, never go away. So those basic tenets, that idea of living every day as if it might be your last, trying to find love, trying to pursue my dreams without selling out, that's contemporary in 1991, in 2001, and in 2011. Fantastic. We see some bands nowadays, you know, leaving their big labels because of that to pursue indie affiliation. So, in comparison, do you think Rent's return to an off-Broadway venue is a chance for the show also to return to its roots? Lord knows. Uh, does returning to off-Broadway return us to our roots? Sure. Um, Rent was conceived as an off-Broadway show by Jonathan Larson when we used to talk about it before it ever opened at New York Theatre Workshop. Our greatest dream for it was that it would live downtown in a garage somewhere uh, where we could have 350 or 400 seats and do it for that audience. Um, the idea that we would ever go to Broadway, um, that was very far from our minds. So uh, here we are, 15 years later, going to off-Broadway. It ain't a garage. But um, it's only 499 seats, and that's a lot of power to push through those walls. With this show, you have such a loyal following from the Rent Heads. There must be a certain consideration for their opinion. Is there, opin uh, is there a balance that needs to be struck between bringing in the new ideas and correlation to keeping old ones? Well, without Rent Heads, there would be no rent. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, this is an American Idol, and no one gets to vote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this production is a reflection of the vision of director Michael Greif and all of the talented artists that he brings around them to make something that is in many ways singular. It's his mm -hmm. vision. It's his interpretation of Jonathan's work. Um, we don't do that through committee. We don't do that through uh, surveys. Mm -hmm. Um, we do that through um, blood and guts and um, art. <laughs> now, um, Rent's last run off Broadway, as you mentioned at NYTW, was wildly successful and the show quickly moved to the Nederlander. If this production is as successful as everyone hopes it will be, will we see another return to Broadway? I can't predict the future. I couldn't predict uh, that rent would become what it became, but that's not our plan. Mm -hmm. You know, our plan is to do it in this 499 seat theater uh, on an economic model uh, that could allow us to run there for a long time. We've certainly seen that um, when uh, Kevin and I, with our partner Robin Goodman, brought Avenue Q off Broadway from Broadway, it worked out um, beyond our wildest imagination, and uh, it's still there almost two years later. Uh, 
uh, happily in a theater yeah. right next door. So uh, I can, you know, my great hope is that two years from now we still have uh, New World stages uh, populated by uh, Rent on the left and Avenue Q on the right. Last question, every Renhead has their favorite song and their favorite character. You're obviously Renhead by far, probably the biggest. I'll cover I, I, you. I need to know. Okay. Yeah. I'll cover you by a long shot. Yeah. It still makes me cry. It made me cry last night at the dress rehearsal. And um, I, I have been uh, uh, emotionally, physically attached to that song since the first time I heard it. And your it's, 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 it, 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 uh, it fills me up with emotion as I say that. And would you say Collins would be your favorite character as well? You know, favorite character, I, I don't know. That's, <laughs> strangely, that's a harder question. Yeah. Is, are, you know, are Collins and Angel my favorite characters because they um, sing that song, because mm -hmm. that song is an embodiment of them? I don't know. I mean, it's just Jonathan's greatest musical moment to me in that play. Mm -hmm. um, the metaphor of the song and the practicality of the song um, was genius. It was as good as any song I've ever heard. Um, I don't have a favorite character, but I know that that song, performed well, moves me every time. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. It's You're been welcome. an absolute pleasure. Good. Have a good time with this. Make some good uh, video. Yeah. <laughs> and um, away you go.